Hello, uh, the practitioner here, Bachelor of Science student, uh, chemistry major, mathematics minor, and amateur magician. So if I have any problems with my differential calculus, I just may be messaging you for help. Anyway, uh, I digress. But um, yeah, I wanted to say um, uh, great work on talking about the uh, issues pertaining to the uh, lack of uh, mathematical uh, understanding um, in uh, the U.S. Um, and, uh, and the reasons for it, you know, that... Um, that is discouraged. Um, I'd like to say, um, again, this is purely my own math. Uh, stand, this is purely my own standpoint from uh, having taken a look at. Now, granted, I even struggle uh, to a certain extent with my calculus. That's more due to my uh, disorganization factor and not studying enough, uh, rather than uh, any uh, problem actually understanding the math. But that's that. I digress. Um, one of the things which I've discovered here in Canada, and again, this is purely uh, my own uh, subjective perspective of having um, done uh, math education, at least on a high school level, um, uh, you know, again, I don't get into differential calculus uh, nine times out of ten. Um, I don't get into uh, calculus type work when uh, dealing with when dealing with the public. However, often I will start dealing with uh, issues that might be in a high school math level to try to explain uh, certain of the complicated issues pertaining to economics or to um, or to basic scientific principles and how they're applied in terms of uh, dealing with issues on a national level. And um, again, I do this in conjunction with my magic shows. And one of the things which I often find is the hardest is um, you'd be surprised at how many people of the general public uh, can't even remember how to do their own basic grade school math. And uh, to cite the example of this, I use uh, mathematics-based mentalist tricks, uh, mind reading type. Uh, for example, the uh, you know the one where you get people to think of any number, multiply by 2, add 10, divide by 2, subtract the original number from the number they have. When I perform this trick, roughly about half the people I do it on can't even, uh, I end up screwing up the trick, i.e. I, uh, I don't read the final number, the, the difference in their head correctly, because of the fact they've actually screwed up on their math. I end up having to reveal the secret of my magic trick just to explain to them the, the difference in their math. And the thing is, what, what's odd about this is the fact that this scares me. Um, uh, on my own part, largely because of the fact that um, often, um, uh, often on this particular point, math of course is discouraged um, in high schools. We have a uh, in, in in elementary school and high schools, we have an issue. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the stats are for Canada um, entirely, but we do have an issue where uh, people who are um, nerds are highly discouraged, and I mean very highly discouraged around here. Um, Having Asperger's syndrome myself, I take the uh, I take the term of nerd as being a compliment. But uh, you should see half the comments that come off my various videos about um, about uh, pertaining to um, uh, being a nerd or being a douchebag because I'm a nerd or, or other stuff like that. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, there is an interesting statistic which I think you might uh, might like. Um, I, in one of my uh, previous videos, quoted uh, some work done by John Walker, well, who, which he referenced off someone else. Um, it was something called the Global IQ Project, and what it was was it was a projection, uh, if you will, taking a look at the overall census uh, from 1952 onwards of the uh, of some 81 countries where uh, they'd done IQ tests. You know, again on mathematics and perception, and you know. Uh, you know, the, the, trying to keep them as unbiased as possible. Well, what's interesting is the fact that um, the mean in roughly 1952 was at 99 or something, and we're at roughly around 87.3 currently right now, and we're looking at an 83 point something, if memory serves. I quoted the stats in one of my other videos uh, a little while back, but basically the, the whole concept is that um, uh, not counting for the standardization towards 100, assuming that the, uh, assuming that the standardization remained the same overall time, um, what we're looking at is we're looking at an actual mean of, you know, say 99 point something initially, but that the actual mean um, overall, uh, again, assuming that the 100 has been standard, uh, is the same over time and has not been re-standardized for the overall population drop or for the overall um, IQ drop, the overall IQ, as the population grows, is the overall mean is actually dropping. And what, so what scares me about this is the fact that um, if this is happening worldwide, and assuming that uh, the countries where this only accurate is accurate would be um, countries such as Western Europe, North America, uh, again where uh, where wasps, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants are being measured on IQ, then that would be the scariest because of the fact that if our Q IQ is dropping overall, then what is that saying about causes for why our IQ, dro IQ drops? And Probably, I would have to agree with you that uh, that not only uh, that probably it's not just in the U.S. but probably in various countries, at least in Western uh, Europe and in North America, 
we are dealing with a problem of uh, mathematical decline. Um, often, uh, one of the other things which is often highly annoying is um, I saw another video broadcast, uh, which I posted a video response to in my global warming video a while back, which um, dealt with um, somebody was trying to use multiplication, basic high school math, to say that we are not contributing to global warming whatsoever because of the fact that we only put up a small percentage of the, uh, again, they tried to put it through a calculator, saying that we only put up a small minute percentage of the uh, CO2 up in the atmosphere, and therefore we are not contributing much to the global warming effect. But the problem is, though, is that even, even if that uh, basic mathematics, like the, high, like the basic high school math is being used, they're not taking into account the actual uh, university level um, uh, equations, which have to go into this, like the universal gas laws, or uh, the, the or the organic chemistry, uh, or or you know like the, the molecular spectroscopy equations, which would be the wave number, and then multiply in the wave number by the uh, you know by the absorption factor uh, again on the on the individual um, on the video uh, on the individual. Um, oh, frick, now I'm uh, sorry, now I'm losing track, but. The, you know, uh, but depending on the individual vibration at a particular given uh, angle or or at a particular given level, again, you know, which which would absorb infrared radiation at a particular frequency, which um, uh, which when multiplied by Planck's constant gives an individual energy. Then, of course, if you multiply that by the number of uh, then if you multiply that for the individual uh, for the individual mo uh, molecule, you multiply by the uh, Avogadro's constant to give you for the average mole. Multiply by the number of moles of CO2 up there, and you get an idea of the energy. And then, of course, uh, you know, don't forget that there of course are you know two different levels and we're talking or multiple different levels and you know you can cut and then from there you can plot an energy level in the rise of uh, in the rise of energy or in the temperature level of co2 that's been rising uh, not counting uh, not forgetting to put, incorporate the uh, kinetic molecular theory of gases which then uh, uh, factors in for other areas uh, applying into the uh, either ideal gas laws or the corrected gas laws for the universal con you, you see what I'm saying like um, but this is what concerns me, is that uh, when there is a large chunk of complicated math, there does seem to be a fear of it. And whenever I've actually tried to present uh, mathematics and science to a lot of people and trying to explain basic scientific things like global warming or uh, necessity of various different areas, um, whenever I try to present this, or even I start trying to present a little bit of calculus when it has to come in, like just even say first year calculus, they probably shut down going, whoa, too much math for me or even high school math, because of this, again, the same problem that they can't remember their grade school math, that whenever I try to present high school math, they probably shut it out. It becomes a, uh, it, it's not just that it's, it becomes a problem of that, you know, that science or math or, or success is viewed as failure. It's, it's partly that, but I think it's also partly with that, that um, because of our lack of education in this, we also end up getting a further shutout. Um, Carl Sagan, uh, back in the 1980s, said roughly 95% of the American public was scientifically illiterate. Now, uh, the National Science Foundation has, um, has kept up similar stats to the, uh, if I remember correctly from what I read from Skeptical Inquirer. Uh, now, the thing is, what concerns me is that if this is true for uh, the U.S., chances are there's probably some reflective stat that's, due for uh, that's true for Canada. I mean, uh, we already have uh, reflective stats about... Um, uh, similar statistics about uh, top 10% of schools that require the least amount of funding get roughly over 80% of funding, and the urban, you know, and the uh, inner city schools get little less than 10% net clean across the board uh, of the net resources left. Uh, or sorry, um, actually, sorry, 40%. Yeah, uh, top 10% get the top 40%, and then the remaining 60% is spread around with the la la with the inner city schools getting the least 20%, if memory serves. Again, that's for Canada. For the U.S., I read it was something around uh, top 10% get the remaining 50%, and then it's spread out even more disparately in the U.S. But again, still it's still you know fairly similar. And uh, the, the social constructs and stuff like that are, are very much similar. Again, uh, you know, so anyway, I digress. But I think the bottom line is um, this is, does not surprise me in the slightest about what you're saying. And in Canada, we have just as much of a problem about this in the, uh, as in the U.S. And uh, given the way that some of our um, our politics and our um, uh, lack of critical thinking can head in our particular day and age, uh, again, I've done this on. Uh, you might want to watch the rest of my videos to see me go into greater detail, uh, to hear my arguments in greater detail on this. I've gone into like shitloads upon shitloads of information on this. But um, basically, my concern is that uh, lack of critical thinking and lack of education. We should probably be going along something uh, of your idea of this, or better yet, uh, try to focus everybody on a much higher mathematical education and say that this is necessary. Uh, you know, uh, because if we don't. Oh, that was the other point I wanted to mention, but I'll put that in the next video because I knew there was something that was crucial about this. But um, uh, let's just say that uh, um, uh, it's all pertaining to my argument about uh, mathematics and technological society. So I'll put that in the next video, and that'll complete my argument.
Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to watch part two.